Hold on. What? Careful. Why? Those are Guido Martelli's men. Who? He, uh, he used to work for Angelo Bronte. I've only been here an hour. Hey. Come over here. What now? Well, you go left, I go right. On three. Mm -hmm. Three. <laughs> when it comes to being asked to cover more of the side characters of Red Dead Redemption 2, those specifically outside of the gang anyways, one name that continually pops up in particular is Guido Martelli. We don't see him much in the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2. As a matter of fact, in the story, you see him one time, and that is it. The one time we see him is during the mission to gild the cage. He's right next to Angelo Bronte and during this entire interaction we never even hear him speak. Outside of that, Guido Martelli's mentioned one other time during the epilogue. And that is of course by Charles in the clip I had already played. Guido Martelli's men were sent after Charles specifically because he went against the mob boss's wishes. He won a fight that he was supposed to take a dive in, collected his winnings, and decided to try and skip town. Something that was not going to go well for Martelli, who at this point in time has come to run the city of Saint Denis. But how? How is this seemingly no-named character, this character that doesn't even have any voice lines, that's just in the background one time, how is he the one that manages to take over and said the rule with an iron fist? Unfortunately, we aren't told directly or given any reason how it happened, or even if the entire Italian mob disintegrated into a power vacuum and multiple factions led by previous employees of the now deceased Bronte ended up fighting for ultimate control of Saint Denis. Honestly, that sounds much more likely given the nature of businesses, criminal enterprises, greed, egos, and the lust for power and overall control. It seems very likely that that ultimately happened. And I would highly doubt that everyone just decided to fall into line underneath the leadership of Martelli. But even if we aren't given a clear, concrete explanation as to how Martelli ended up taking over the city and having the police in his pocket, as Charles goes on to say that during this time where him and John are trying to escape Saint Denis, Charles explicitly says they cannot get captured by the police because Guido Martelli has them in his pocket. He will ensure that they will not leave the interview room. No, we can't get caught. Martelli has the police chief in his pocket. If they take us in. We won't get out of the interview room. Despite the lack of it being spoon-fed to us, we can still make a pretty educated guess on how this all came to be. You see, if we go all the way back to the days of Angelo Bronte, where Martelli said to have been his right-hand man, Martelli's responsibility is said to have been in charge of primarily handling the bribery and corruption of the San Dali police force to ensure they turn a blind eye to Bronte and the mob's criminal activity in and around the city. This would prove to be quite useful as following the death of his boss, Angelo Bronte, Guido Martelli could have very well have leveraged the connections he's made with the police force to keep them in his pocket and on his side. Either taking part in actively snuffing out any of his rivals, or they may have played a more inactive role just ignoring whatever Martelli was up to. Not necessarily choosing a side, but staying on the sidelines whenever Martelli had something cooking up. With the police force already on his side passively, or possibly even actively working to apprehend the other mobsters, forcing the factions to all unite under a solid mob, as it was in the days of Bronte, it would make sense that the police force and whatever kind of mutual understanding Guido Martelli has made with figures within the law enforcement helped essentially protect any vulnerabilities he may have had and be granted the freedom to focus on any potential rivals, slowly consolidating his power in and around the city. Thanks to his later introduction in Red Dead Online, we are given a little insight into how he may have interacted with the police. He was just arrested by one of my men in the old quarter. I thought you might be interested to see what they found in his possession. How did you come by this? You stole it, yes? No, no. Please, Senor, Senor Martelli. You don't speak I, my I, name, I, Borgo. I found it. I swear to you, I on did. Your knees. I did. I found it. I did. On your knees. I swear to you. No, no, please. I, Where? Did you steal it? No, I, I promise you that I didn't steal it. I will ask you only one more time. Where did you steal it? R from some of the corn walls, boys. Le Leviticus corn wall. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. I trust this man will face the full penalty of the law. Most assuredly, Senor. Good. Proceed. Was there uh, anything else? No, I think that was enough, don't you? Yes, sir. Although because Red Dead Online takes place before the events of Red Dead Redemption 2's story, I would still say, even though he's a little ruthless, he still does operate within the rule of Bronte, 
as he's not yet running his own criminal organization. Based off how he is in Red Dead Online and how Charles says he wouldn't let him or John out of the interview room alive, I will say I feel Martelli's much more dangerous between him and Bronte. Bronte was a very arrogant man that seemed to take a little bit of pleasure in insulting others and reminding them how inferior they are to him. He did that quite a bit with Dutch and rather than just outright dealing with the gang and its leaders in a city that he already controlled, he instead opted for another approach by tricking them and even humiliating them by baiting them into a trap he set by pushing Dutch to go rob the trolley station that he was well aware not only didn't house any significant cash but with Bronte running the police essentially it was just a giant show of force and a reminder that he's at least mentally superior. He keeps referring to Dutch being some dumb redneck hillbilly that screws cows and isn't capable of even bathing himself. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> Those sure were the days. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. Mm, good day to you. Martelli, on the other hand, seems much more cutthroat, down to business. There's no point in any show or personal gratification and reminding other people how rich he is or how important he is or how smart he is. At the end of the day, it seems like he's well aware that this is his city, he's in control, and while there may be a show of force, there's no need to go the extra mile and remind everyone that he is mentally superior, that he's the intelligent one. That is ultimately all we know about Guido Martelli. He's the successor to Angelo Bronte. He took over the city of Saint-Denis and I saw someone comment that he runs his own mob rather than just taking over the mob that was already existing in the city of Saint-Denis, fully replacing Angelo Bronte. And like I said, there's no real concrete information on whether if it was just a splintered faction that he took over and managed to slowly consume all the other factions into the they were all united under a single brand or if he really just did take over fully replacing Angelo Bronte and we also don't know everything that he's getting into ultimately he still does run the entire city and has eyes and ears everywhere as far as the police are concerned or even his own henchmen but we do know that obviously they're involved with illegal fighting rings some form of tax evasion I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that they are involved in extortion across the city or even blackmailing some city officials to ensure whatever they want to happen or not to happen within the city's accomplished and no one has the balls to say otherwise but that's gonna wrap it up for Guido Martelli the successor of Angelo Bronte and ultimately the person that rules the city of Saint Denis during the game's epilogue if there's anything I missed or anything else you want to add to this conversation please share it down below as well as anyone else or any other topic you want me to do next I'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are but until next time I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs> ah, the angry cowboys, you've arrived. And you've washed for the prima volta questo mese senza dubbio. <laughs> oh.